What's up guys, uh, uh, Slim Reptiles here, and I'm going to bring you another video. It's going to be um, kind of a different stages of breeding leopard geckos and what I do. And then I'm going to show you what, when, the, when they lay the eggs and what I do with the eggs. And then I'm going to show you when they hatch and what to do with them when they hatch. Now obviously this video is going to take months for me, but it's going to take minutes for you because it's just going to cut through time like magic. The first thing I do is I get the female, I um, cool it down for a month, not too much, just a little bit cool down for a month, same with the male, I put them back in the heat slowly, I don't put the heat all the way up, I put it like halfway then all the way up after a couple of days. Um, after a couple of days from them going out of hibernation, I start to feed them, make sure they're eating and pooping, getting their calcium, put extra calcium and vitamins in there for them along with their mealworms. I also get uh, super worms as well and crickets to kind of, and dubia roaches to fatten them up beforehand. Feed them a bunch. Make sure they're nice and fat. They gain some weight back from the, the month without eating and the cool down. So yeah, this is going to be the first part. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the male in with the female. And hopefully they instantly lock up. Hopefully. So these two have bred before. The female, the purplish one, is a blizzard head albino. And the yellowish one is an albino head blizzard. They've bred from me before, so I got some awesome babies from them. I'm hoping there right now they can just lock up real quick, get it over with. We shall see. She looks like she's being pretty receptive. Let's see if we can get down here. See if they do their thing. I might have to leave them in here for like a, you know, a couple hours. Some people leave them in there all the time. I try not to. Sometimes I do. These two are usually fine together. Usually every season they insta lock, but doesn't look like that's happening right now. But yeah, that's just an overview. <clears throat> so I put them on cooldown for a month. Take them off, cool down, wait a couple of days, turn the heat all the way back up, start feeding them, pound them with food, uh, vitamins and calcium, fresh water, clean cages. And then, um, yeah, there he goes. He's shaking his tail, you can kind of see. That's one tail sign that they're going about to do it. Um, they'll both kind of shake their tails and vibrate them. Now, they should lock up. Technically, they only have to lock up once. Because, um, you know, for the whole time, I do a couple of times. Like right now, uh, it's part of the breeding. They bite each other, um, usually by the necks or the heads or the tails. You can see he's vibrating. He wants to get, he wants to get with her. So now he's going to try to get out of this. See, kicked her aside. Now he's probably going to try biting her again. Oh, she stopped him first. All right, now she's biting him. So now I might have to separate them because she looks like she ain't having it right now. We'll see. Like I said, this is normal, guys. They're not really hurting each other, I promise. They're not squeaking or anything. This is part of it. It's happened every year so far. It happens every time. Uh, let's see where this goes. They don't really uh, lock up in another minute when we take them out because she looks, uh, usually she doesn't bite him. She's usually the opposite. Now she got his, yeah, he got her tail, and he's going to try to line himself up so he can get under her tail. He's barely got it bitten. You can see there's barely any skin in his mouth. I'm definitely going to fast forward it probably at this point until they actually lock up. Bite. She got him again. All right, he looks like he's getting frustrated. He's like, all right, it's time to do this thing. Like, come on. See, he's starting to position himself. There we go. That's what we want to see. He's trying to get under her tail. He's a little bit too far up. There we go. See, now he's under her tail like that. Oh. 
Yeah, on a hoax. All right, he's gonna try again. Come on, get under there. Lift your tail up, baby. There we go. So now there they go. Tails are locked. He's in. He's making sure he's getting everything out. Going. So he's still got her locked. Still got her locked in. But yeah, he's right under that tail. So I don't want to mess with him too much. I'm going to see if I can get on the other side. I don't know what you saw. I can't see my phone. But there we go. He's done. He's out. You know, they're both, or mostly him, but they're both probably going to clean themselves now. Just having a pee. Sometimes you got to check, make sure they go back in. Look okay. There we go, guys. The teeth is done. So I'm going to end this segment right here. So that's the basics. I'm going to repeat this maybe once a week for a couple weeks. There he goes. He's about to clean himself. Clean himself off. He's going to lick his hemipene. Get it back in there. And yeah, that's like I said, that's part one. Now, uh, you know, she, hopefully she's pregnant. Sometimes it takes a couple of times, but I've never had an issue. So now we pretty much wait for eggs. In about a month, I believe. Maybe a, a couple of days longer. Maybe a month and a week. She should lay her first set of eggs. And then I'll pick up the video from there and uh, show you what happens when they get the eggs. And I'll probably also include, um, so I, haven't, I don't have it ready yet, but then I'll include, uh, you know, what I do for the lay box and whatnot. So yeah, guys, see ya like in about a month or so. Alright guys, welcome to the second part of the uh, leopard gecko breeding process. <clears throat> so, um... Not the female that I, um, you know, originally had in uh, the first part of the video, but it's a different female. Um, it's her first year breeding, and she actually laid her eggs before the other girl. So I figured it's the same process, so different eggs, but I'm still going to show you anyway. So now what I'm usually going to do is um, a, a candle, which is pretty much just uh, putting, you know, a... Uh, flashlight to it, make sure you see the, the red veins and everything, make sure they're fertile. And um, if they are, the next thing I do, um, I, have, I can't candle right now, because as you can see, kind of, it is uh, still daytime, so it's kind of hard to candle when it's bright out. But yeah guys, what I have here is just a deli cup, and it's full of this stuff called uh, hat, right? Which is right here. I can get it. Uh, I bought it from RainbowMealWorms.com. I think you can get it from pretty much any expo or anything. But yeah, you put it on the bottom like this. You don't got to add water or nothing. It has like, um, if you can see it, like a water crystal and the actual substrate together so you don't got to worry about humidity. What I'll do is just very gently pick them up. Before I pick them up, I'm just gonna get a permanent marker, like a sharpie, sharpie, and just mark them where the tops are, very gently, because it's still really soft. Just so I know where the tops were when they were laid. And I'm gonna grab them one by one. See, got this little one here. And I'm just gonna put them Take them down a tiny bit, put them right in there. Grab the second one. They feel really good. They should be uh, fertile. I feel like they are at least. Decent sized eggs, especially for our first year. And that's it, guys. So just pop the lid on. I put a couple of air holes. I don't know if you can see it. Just to keep airflow, but nothing crazy. And then you just go right down here to your incubator. Open it up. Put it in. Like so. Close it. And now you have the waiting game. I don't know if you can see it in there. There they are. Just have the waiting game now. So you just wait. I have it set to 83 because I want mostly females this year. I might change it uh, later on in the season. 
But yeah, guys, that's the that's the second part, and now uh, the next part I'll show you when the eggs hatch and how I set them up. So this will probably be the last uh, video, I guess, for this uh, this video on leopard geckos from egg to hatching. So um, little guy finally hatched out of the egg. I'm gonna show you him now. There he is. He's really dope. So what I do is after they hatch, <clears throat> I keep them in the incubator till they come completely out of the egg and they're walking out. And then I uh, do a real simple setup. What I do is obviously I just do um, I put them in this little tub. I think it's a six quart, eight quart. I forget exactly what it is. And um, I put paper towel down to substrate. I put a couple layers, and I mist it really, really, really well. Not where it's like wet or soaked or anything. But uh, really damp. I put a little hide in there for him, and I usually try to do a little water bowl. This one's a little bit bigger than I would hope for. I just didn't have any. Uh, what I usually use is uh, bottle caps, like water bottle caps or soda caps. And uh, you put a little bit of water. You don't want them to drown or anything big or anything. You don't want them to fall in. Which they probably don't even really use the water bowl to be honest, because you're keeping this pretty, pretty uh, misted. As you can see, there's like water on the side. You can look that, and that's all I put in there. No food, no calcium powder, nothing else. But one gecko, in one tub, with the hide, paper towel, and water bowl, and that's it. That's how I set them up right after they hatch. Now, in a couple of days or so, he will uh, poop for the first time, and you'll see it. As he hasn't done it yet, so I can't actually show you, but. It'd be like a little, uh, it'd be a weird color. It'd be like greenish, brownish, yellowish. It won't be that much. You have to keep an eye out for that. And once he poops, he is, uh, for the first time, he'll sh he'll shed, actually, and then poop. And after that first shed and poop, you can start feeding him. You can put another little, little container in there with some mealworms or whatever. You can do pinhead crickets, baby superworms, you know, whatever you, whatever you choose to feed your gecko. You can also put another little container in there for calcium and vitamin powder if you like. That's what I usually do, as well as dusting and everything. So yeah, it's just a... I don't think he really likes the, the light, but... So just a little overview. Um, so they lay the eggs. So you put, um, put the male and female together. Um... All right, let me start from the beginning. Let's recap this. So the first thing I did was I cooled them down for like a month. Not too long, not too cold. Just a, just a little temperature difference. And then after you put them together, you wait about 30-ish days. They'll, you put the lay box in the cage. They'll lay the eggs. You take them out. You put them in a deli cup or a container with uh, vermiculite. Uh, you set the temperature to what you want it, either anywhere between 80 to 90. If you incubate them at 80 degrees, they'll, most of them will come out as female. Incubate them at 90 degrees, most of them will come out as male. And if you do 85 or anything in between, you'll get half and half, typically. So after that, depending on what temperature you have, they'll hatch. This guy hatched in about 45 days, maybe 43 days. Um, like I said, I let them fully hatch out. I put them in a simple setup. 
once he sheds and poops for the first time, I'll add the mealworm dish, I'll add calcium powder, and I'll start feeding him like crickets and dubia and whatnot, what I usually do, like normal. So like I said, once he poops, that's when he just becomes a normal, you take care of him just like a normal upper gecko. They're just a little tiny. As you can see, they're really tiny when they hatch out. That's like my finger, barely the size of it. And then what, one thing is also important, at least I think, is to keep track records. Um, I'm going to shut this now because of light. But yeah, you keep track records. So what I usually do is, let's put the video on this guy. What I usually do is I write, I give him a number. Like right now it's a 19H and then he'd be one because he was a hatchling in um, 2019. I write when his eggs were laid, I lay when he hatched, when he poops the first time, and eats the first time, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That way when I go to sell them, I can tell them everything that I know. I can tell them everything I know about it from literally anything that is possibly to be known. And I feel like a lot of people enjoy that. So yeah, that's it guys. That's uh, That's this video on producing a leopard gecko and how to take care of it. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you next video. And hopefully you guys have some success. Let me know down in the comments what you're breeding this year. If you're breeding, it's your first year, second year. So uh, let me know, guys. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. Thank you so much again for watching the video. Um, sorry if I repeated myself a couple of times. I did it over like a month and a half, so I kind of forgot. Uh, when I mentioned if you guys have any questions or comments or anything just let me know down in the comments You know I'll try to answer them the best I can if I miss anything is anything for you to add let me know And I really appreciate it guys. Thanks for checking out the video. I'll see you next time